All right, so we've got our brass chucked up, one and an eighth inch. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and face this off. Turn down the OD just to clean it up a little bit. Um, we'll machine in, you know, just a little undercut in our rotor so our rotor's not completely flat. Uh, we've got to drill it, ream it, and then part it off. So let's go ahead and get this faced. It's already pretty smooth, but uh, got to get rid of this knob and that sort of stuff, so. Clean up the OD. And we just need just a little bit off, just enough to clean it up and make it round. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and drill this and ream it. First, we're going to center drill. Move the camera here. All right, we want our rotor diameter to be probably about uh, 700 thousandths, which is actually we're about right on 700 right there. So um, we want to, uh, I'm just going to get a Sharpie. And this is just a real quick and easy depth stop. Okay. And we'll go a little bit past that because we've got to part it off and uh, it'll be easier if we don't have to go through the entire diameter. Okay, we drilled a size under our reamer. All right, so we got a quarter inch reamer. We'll go nice and slow. Move this here.
All right, so we've got our reamed. Let's check the fit with our axle. So I have one of the axles cleaned up. And, oh yeah, that's a nice fit. In fact, it's actually a little bit of a vacuum pulling that out. That's kind of cool. Yep, perfect fit. Okay, now we're going to machine down this a little bit just to give it a little bit of contour. And then we'll go ahead and part it off. Pretty good. Now uh, just gotta hit this, chamfer this just slightly. Okay, that looks great. Now we're gonna go ahead and part this off. This is pretty big to part. Um, usually, if, you know, I don't have enough stick out here to cut it off on the bandsaw, so we'll just do it in the lathe. But uh, I think it should be okay, just nice and slow. Especially since it's brass. Okay, we're lined up here. And we're going to go ahead and put a chuck in here. With a brass rod to catch it when we part it off. and go nice and slow.
there's our rotor. We just need to, uh, we'll check this out and uh, face this and then make the same profile on this side as we did here, or as we did on this side. So that's good. Yeah, parted nice, nice and straight. It's actually a really nice finish on there just from the parting blade, not too bad. So, and our hole, our reamed hole is dead center. You can tell by the, it's just got a very, very thin, a uh, little bit of brass there is so looks good okay we're gonna go ahead and turn our uh, axle uh, that our rotor is gonna ride on um, I'm gonna use quarter inch 316 stainless steel I've got a couple of them cut face to length uh, I've got one chucked up here so we just need to uh, uh, cut these turn these down to about a hundred and twenty thousandths is what our uh, bearing ID is. Um, uh, we're going to do that on both ends and that's it for this and then we'll go ahead and uh, turn the brass rotor to fit on here. Alright, so we need to take off about a hundred and thirty thousandths uh, off this, so we'll go ahead and start with just about a sixty thousandths cut or so. Measuring 124,000, so it looks like you got about 4,000 to go. So a little cut. All right, let's check our fit. Good, that fits nice. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and do the same to the other side. Thirteen thousandths off. About right there, we might need to take a thousandths or so, but. Just a tiny bit. fit perfect all right 
Okay, that's all done. We'll turn our rotor next. Okay, so we're set up at the mill. Uh, I machined out some uh, of our little brass pieces that are going to hold our bearings uh, for the uh, gyroscope rotor. Um, I didn't take any video of this. It was I did it on a actually a mini lathe, which is kind of nice for these tiny little parts. Um, and I don't have a good setup for for a camera there. But right now is what we're going to do is we're going to slot um, the threaded end of this so that we can use just a slot screwdriver in order to tighten up or just adjust the screws uh, to get the right amount of play. Uh, so our setup, we just have, I just have a, a small little V-block that I made here in the vise and a slitting saw in the mill. And we're just going to run this through and slit it real quick. Um, and it'll give us uh, just a you know, nice slot for our slot screwdriver. So there's our slot in there, it'll focus. And that's all done. Okay, so we're set up at the mill. Uh, I machined out some uh, of our little brass pieces that are gonna hold our bearings uh, for the uh, gyroscope rotor. Um, I didn't take any video of this, it was, I did it on a, actually a mini lathe, which is kinda nice for these tiny little parts. Um, and I don't have a good setup for, for a camera there. But right now is what we're going to do is we're going to slot um, the threaded end of this so that we can use just a slot screwdriver in order to tighten up or just adjust the screws uh, to get the right amount of play. Uh, so our setup, we just have, I just have a, a small little V-block that I made here in the vise and a slitting saw in the mill. And we're just going to run this through and slit it real quick. Um, and it'll give us uh, just a you know, nice slot for our slot screwdriver. So there's our slot in there, it'll focus. And that's all done. Now we can go ahead and put our bearings in uh, semi-permanently into our inner gimbal as well as into uh, these new brass pieces uh, we just made um, that are going to hold our rotor and shaft in place. And I'm just going to use some uh, some green, uh, it's kind of greenish blue retaining compound. Uh, this is just uh, similar to like a Loctite 242, but it's a little bit stronger. And I'm just going to take a toothpick, get a little bit on it, and put it just in here. We don't want a ton, just enough so it'll dry and lock those bearings in place so they won't fall out. Just insert that in there, let that guy dry. Okay. And then the recesses that we machined here for our, our outer gimbals, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Sorry, the inner gimbal, my bad.
Mm -hmm. Alright, so we'll just leave those in there, let that dry and set up, and move on to the next. Okay, we've got our rotor and our axle finished up. On the axle, I went ahead and I uh, drilled a, a through hole for our pull string and chamfered it and uh, cleaned it up a little bit, just light, lightly sanded it. Uh, likewise, on the rotor, I finished both sides. Um, and then I also put together the uh, inner and outer gimbal rings. Um, I, uh, the bearings that we had put in there previously uh, are riding on a shaft here. We, we slit the, uh, used the slitting saw to slit the brass. And uh, so I just went ahead and put those in there. And so that's how the inner gimbal will work. And then the rotor is going to be in here between those bearings. And first we've got to put the rotor shaft on. So we're just going to use some retaining compound to do that. So the shaft is a, or the axle is a really nice fit through there with that reamed hole. Uh, fits great. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly in the center because we can use our uh, adjustment screws here to center it up. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be really close uh, right there. So all we're going to do is just take a little bit of retaining compound and it kind of wicks into the gap, the, the tiny little gap between the uh, the rotor and the axle there. I'll put a little bit on here. Okay. And that stuff will hold that on there really nice. Uh, it won't come off unless you either, you know, use a press, press that out of there, or if you heat it up and uh, melt it. But other than that, it's, it's going to be on there good. So we're going to go ahead and let that dry. And then uh, it actually dries pretty quick when you have a really close fit like that. When there's only, you know, a half a thousandth, maybe a thousandth worth of... Uh, uh, gap between the two it cures really quick uh, but we'll let that cure for a little bit and then we'll go ahead and mount that in our gibble and see how it spins see how it looks should be pretty cool it's always fun when it actually you know some pieces actually start to fit together and you can see them work so we'll check back in a minute all right so our Rotor is uh, secured to the axle, and I went ahead and mounted it in this uh, inner gimbal here. And we'll go ahead and give it a pull. See how it works so far. Now this is going to be sitting in one extra set of gimbals, um, so. But we'll just give it a try and wind this up. We'll give it a try and see how it works. I don't have the adjustment screws Loctited, so they might back out just a little bit when it's spinning, but that'll be okay. Um, when it's installed, we'll have Loctite on there. Oh yeah, that's cool. So you can see when you move the uh, outer gimbal this way, it changes the... Uh, uh, where the gyroscope wants to be orient oriented. Um, so this will be on a third gimbal. And yeah, it, that, that rotor's got a lot of, you know, even for how relatively small it is, it's got a lot of force on it. Um, you can really feel it when you move this thing. That's, that's pretty surprising actually. But uh, cool, it's looking good. So, yeah, these screws will be Loctited so they won't come, come loose. You'll be able to move them slightly with a screwdriver. Um, yeah, it's uh, coming together. It's pretty cool. On to the next step, which will be mounting uh, this into the third gimbal, as well as um, 
machining the uh, I guess the stem for the the stand you know the the stem that's going to screw into the base that's going to hold this whole thing up yeah that's actually pretty cool just with that I didn't really pull it that hard so I don't know how fast that was spinning not not extremely fast and even now that it's slowing down it's it's still still feels pretty cool All right.